Greatest. Cross it into Kane. Kane scores! I'm not dreaming. We're still here. H, thanks for coming on the show. Just 24 hours after an iconic win against the Germans at Wembley. How are you feeling? Oh, man, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. A little bit tired. Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, a lot of uh, a lot of buzzing going around yesterday. Um, yeah, managed to get a bit of sleep, so just kind of on a little come down today. Obviously, we've got to try and focus on to Saturday now, but, uh, yeah, special day for, for everyone, for sure. I was I was gonna I was gonna ask you how do you how do you sleep after a game like that because we had Bukayo on and he said he didn't sleep till 5 a.m. the night that he played like is everything going through your mind at that time? Yeah, you kind of just especially a game like that when the atmosphere and the energy is so high, it's so hard to really come down. The adrenaline still running through your body. Um, we probably got back to the hotel about midnight, I'd say, and then yeah, a good two three hours just laying in bed. <laughs> You're trying to switch off, but uh, it's hard, you know. It's just you. you I'm someone who likes to process the game, like yeah. go through everything that happened in the game, and um, yeah, when you have the highs like we did yesterday, it's just amazing, really. I promise you, we'll get onto your goal. I promise you. <laughs> Before that, I want to talk about like the mentality and how do you prepare yourself mentally for a game that big, a knockout game at Wembley against the Germans? Yeah, I mean, we had a lot of time as well. We had like six six days to prepare, which is a lot of time in a tournament environment. So. Uh, it weren't easy, it was just, we obviously had a lot of time to work on the training pitch, the tactical side of it. Um, and then it just comes down to being ready, you know, we was all itching to play, watching all the other games yeah, before, yeah. it was just like, oh, we just want to be out there playing now. Um, and that's the most pleasing thing, you know, the expectation was on us, a lot of pressure on us, being at home, obviously a knockout game, and, and to come through that uh, will give us huge belief going forward for sure. The reason why I talk about mentality and preparation for that game is because I heard this morning from one of the backroom staff that you gave a gave a rousing speech before the game that was like, like, described as kind of goosebumps. People gave people goosebumps. Can you tell us a little bit more about what you said, how you came to kind of be the person saying that speech? I mean, well? yeah, it's something that I do before every game. Um, as the captain, obviously, it's a hard one because we've been speaking so much. Like, everyone speaks in the change room. Everyone's getting each other up for it. But it's just like a little little mess, message, kind of we're getting a little huddle maybe 30 seconds before we leave. And, for sure. Um, it's just the last message is tr just trying to get everyone, I mean, I don't need to get everyone up for it because everyone's ready to go. So it's just little reminders. Um, and yeah, just speak from the heart, really. And, and that's part of what I try and do. Uh, I won't go into too much detail into it. Into you don't want to give away all the trade no, secrets. To, hopefully we can go all the way and then I can, I can share a few. But no, it's just, um, yeah, it's something I, I enjoy to do. It's something we've done for a while as a team. Whoever's captain on the day will, will speak. And uh, I think it's good to just hear a voice just before we go out. I've kept you waiting long enough. The goal. <laughs> Talk, talk me through it. Was it we had to, you had to wait a while for it. Is it something, was it like more of a, like a, a release of joy? Was it like, thank God that I've, I've got this goal now, we just kick on? What was the feeling? Yeah, I mean, as a striker, you know, you want to score every game, 100%. Um, but I'm also someone who don't get too carried away if I'm scoring loads or if I'm not scoring. So, um, I mean, I just try and stay in the moment. I always say to young people, boys and girls growing up, just, wait, just, just just be ready for the next one, you know. As a striker, you might miss a couple of chances, just be ready for the next one. And, and I've always got belief in myself, so uh, obviously Jack put a great ball in uh, and I just managed to kind of adapt my body a little bit. Adapt and, your body? I think you, you do, you're doing I, Pilates and yoga I to know, get you yeah, that one. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, and then once that ball hits the back of the net, it's just pure elation and pure joy. Uh, the moment as well, to see him Wembley like it was. Um, and yeah, just being part of that and... Obviously, the celebrations, see a couple it of pictures there. Just pure joy. Like, it yeah. wasn't one of those like pre-rehearsed celebrations. It was just carnage. Yeah, and, and they're the best ones. You know, they're the ones you want to be involved in. Everyone jumping on top, little bundle. Um, <laughs> and yeah, they're the moments that stick with you forever. You know, um, of course, we want to make sure that it wasn't for nothing. We want to make sure we go uh, and make it all worthwhile. But they're the nights and they're the days that, that stick in you, stick in your memory. Not just for me as a as a player, but I think as the fans and everyone watching as well. You got the chance to speak to your family a little bit after the game. How nice is it to be able to share those huge historic moments with them? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's great. It's hard because obviously we can't cuddle and we can't go and like, be close to them. So we have to talk to them from afar. But uh, yeah, obviously my wife was there, um, my mum, dad, brother, mother-in-law, father-in-law, friends. 
So, you know, people who've grown up with you, seen the highs and the lows, um, so to have them there at, at that moment when there's a, a huge high is special and um, obviously they're so proud and hopefully uh, we can have a few more occasions like that. For sure. I mean, the 18 months that everyone's had, it takes. I think it takes a little bit of stress off. It's, it's, a, it's a nice distraction. It's, it's something to feel, feel good about as well. And talking of feeling good, the 40-something thousand fans at Wembley, like to score that goal and... It, it must have been an amazing feeling that at home with that noise, with that game. Yeah, it's hard to put into words, really. Um, like I say, it's been a difficult time for everyone. Um, everyone being at home, everyone not being able to go out. And uh, yeah, like, as players, it was one of the best feelings ever. But we know we put a smile on the fans' faces, people at home watching, people in the stadium. We gave them a moment that they probably haven't had for, for a long period of time. So that's, that's special to be able to do that, to, to have that gift, to be able to do that. And like I said, to be one of the ones who scored and, and had that immediate adrenaline rush and seeing the fans fall over and seeing <laughs> just Wembley rocking and, and then even after the game, the, the sweet Caroline and all that. Yeah. It was just, uh, it's just, yeah, it, it just gives you goosebumps for sure. And um, just, yeah, just memories that, that will live for you forever. You, you were in the stands, you got, to, you got to see it live and direct in the stadium. But this is what was happening across the country. I want you to take a look at okay. some of these scenes. <laughs> Carnage. I mean, I love these videos. I love, yeah, I love watching the... I mean, I was, I was an England fan. I was obviously watching England growing up, going to the pubs, watching them. I hope you had a shirt on that. I mean, this is... uh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, throwing the drinks, just, I mean, look at it, look. I think Stormzy's down there in the, in, in the corner, yeah, I've actually. Seen this, the... yeah. <laughs> I think at one point he's, he's getting on the table. So. <laughs> and I mean, that's, what, that's, that's the joy of football. That's what football does. Yeah. And we, we speak a lot about representing England and putting on the English shirt. And um, because we know how much it means to everyone, we know how much it means to. There's a little cane shirt there, love that. Yeah, um, <laughs> to get that in. Yeah, no, we, that's what I mean. So an opportunity for us to to do that, to see those those scenes is just uh, it's just an amazing feeling. And uh, we don't want to stop here, you know. We want to keep giving the country as much joy as possible and, and that starts again on Saturday. You know, you know what's interesting? It's not just the fan parks in the UK that, that will go mad because uh, I've got a friend in New York who sent me this video oh, yeah? from uh, a, a pub in New York. And these are the seats. These are all England fans have taken over. Oh wow! It's gone. It's, it's gone worldwide. <laughs> you know what I mean? The feeling, the madness has yeah. gone worldwide. And I think that's what you forget sometimes. Obviously, we talk about our country, but you forget. Oh, this. You know what? Let me explain this video to you. This is this is this is uh, Michael Tim, good friend of the show. This is a rendition of Sweet Caroline. is is not great, but you know <laughs> Gareth's getting involved as well. <laughs> oh, I mean it's brilliant. It's brilliant to watch. You know, it's just. I love them videos, obviously, you see them on social media yeah. and stuff like that, and uh, it just gets you going, it makes you want to be out there in the next game, doing the same thing, so, like I said, hopefully there's a few more, few more moments like that. That wasn't the only rendition of Sweet Caroline, there's one where you were, you, you were doing an interview, and Sweet Caroline was ringing out through Wembley Stadium, and it seemed like you just kind of breathing it in and, and taking a moment just to, just to embrace it. Yeah, it was, um, it, it was quite emotional, it was obviously... Uh, like I said, I had my friends and my family there. Um, and just, just seeing Wembley, seeing the crowd, seeing everyone come together like that, obviously after a difficult time, and, and to be part of that, to be part of the reason where we're putting smiles on people's faces. So, yeah, it was nice just to kind of take a moment, look around the stadium and just appreciate uh, what we're doing, you know. Um, we, we have a vision of where we want to be. We've had a vision of where we want to get to. Uh, and it's days like that that... You know, make it all worthwhile, all the hard work, all the self-belief, all the dedication behind the scenes, the training here, in the gym. Um, that's, what, that's what it's for. So, um, yeah, it was just a nice moment. Take it all in and hopefully, uh, hopefully we can have another feeling like that in, in a week or so. For sure. We could, I could do a, a six-hour Lions Den episode on, on just this game, but we've got to look forward <laughs> to Ukraine in Rome. What does preparation look like? It's another quick turnaround. Yeah, I mean, this one's obviously a lot quicker than, than before. Um, re recover today, recover probably tomorrow, and then we'll be training and travelling on the Friday, getting ready for the game. So uh, this one's more ment mental more than anything. Um, 
coming off a big high like that yesterday is about kind of getting back down to earth, yeah. focusing on, on what's to come because we haven't done nothing yet. You know, we've still got a long way to go and Ukraine will be a tough game uh, in a different different stadium, so a different experience, one we've not had yet in this tournament. So, um, yeah, it's just important that, that we just focus on that now. You know, like I said, we have a vision of where we want to be and it's not just winning them one-off games, one-off knockout games, it's going all the way. So, um, yeah, we've got to make sure we recover well now. The boys are training who didn't play and training hard um, and we're going to need everyone if we want to go far in this tournament. I was going to say that I think it's one of the best things about this squad is the depth. Like There are players that maybe weren't in the matchday squad or that haven't played yet that can still offer so much in, against so many different oppositions. Yeah, absolutely. And it's so important, you know, uh, as the tournament goes on and, the, and like this quick turnaround now, there's going to be players who maybe can't play the full 90 minutes or won't be able to start games and might yeah. have to chop and change. And, and that's when the squad is so important to to make sure you're training well, you're hungry for that opportunity and, and when it comes that you take it with both hands. You've seen that already in this tournament that people who've come in uh, have taken their chance and, and managed to get in the team and um, you never know when your opportunity is going to come. So I'm always someone who tells everyone to be ready, be ready for that chance and, and when it comes make sure you never let it go. First game in the tournament outside of, outside of Wembley. How does that affect you know, preparations or how does that make you, is it, do you approach it different mentally? Yeah, I mean, of, of course, we won't have that same uh, energy in, inside the stadium like we did at Wembley. Um, but that's something that we've kind of got used to playing at club level for the last kind of um, couple of years now, really, with no fans in the stadium. So it's about creating that, that environment ourselves, creating that energy ourselves on the pitch, whether that's talking or, or, work, or, work, or pressing or being calm on the ball. So kind of... We're going to have to manage that ourselves on the pitch. So, um, I mean, whoever whoever will be out there, hopefully there's a few fans that make it out there. And, I'm sure. Um, we will. Like I said, we, we'll do everything we can to, to make it a good night for everyone. You know, you, you were travelling back during the time of the Ukraine-Sweden game. Did you manage to catch any of that? Did you watch it? Anyone that we need to look out for? Yeah, I mean, yeah. So we was on the coach on the way back and we were watching it. We had it on. Um, I mean, it's a good game. Obviously, it went to extra time, so it was a tough game for, for both teams. Obviously, Sweden went down to 10 men. Uh, and then, yeah, Ukraine had a huge high scoring yeah. in the last minute of extra time. So uh, I'm sure they'll be buzzing today as a team. Um, and I'm sure they'll take that into, into the game on Saturday as well. So, uh, I mean, we just got to make sure we're ready for everyone. Uh, I think their greatest strength is their team unity. Um, we need to be ready for that. So uh, we know that if we play to our highest abilities and mentally, then, then we should have enough to win the game. Um, but it's knockout football, anything can happen, sure. so we've got to make sure we're ready. Fair play. H, earlier today, uh, AJ Tracy actually tweeted this tweet here. And I'll read it out to you guys. I hope at some point I can speak to Kane and let him know how much of a role model I think he is. Nothing but respect for someone at the top of their game who can put all the hate on mute and focus on performance. And what we do here on Lions Den, is we connect people. So okay. I'd like to welcome the main man, AJ Tracy. Ah, here he is. What's up, guys? You all right? Here we go. Oh, he's in, he's in the back. There, in the there back. we go. AJ, hey, how I'm you doing? Back, I'm behind you guys. How you doing, guys? You all right? What's happening? You good? All good, all good, all good. You enjoy the game? Yeah, this? man. How you guys doing? Yeah, good. Enjoy the game yesterday? I today? loved it. I loved it. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah, man. AJ, nah. AJ, it sounds like you've got some stuff you want to say to the man next to me. Yeah, Kane, man. Obviously, you saw the tweet, but yeah, I think you're a great role model for the kids, of for everyone in general, man. It's good to be able to tunnel vision, you know, block out the, the opinions and just focus on being the best you can be, man. I just wanted to let you know that oh. you've got a lot of respect over here, man. We respect you a lot. I appreciate that. I appreciate that a lot, man. That's, that's good to hear from, from you especially. That's nice, man. You know, the, the funny thing course, is that my guy. He's, he's, he's one of those football fans that, he, he, you know what I mean, regardless of club, regardless of your sport in Tottenham, I mean, He's, just, he's, he's a people person, you know what I mean? And yeah. he, he supports people, and that's, that's the best thing about AJ as well. And what I wanted to just kind of dig into that a little bit and, and try and get an answer from you is how do you deal with that? Because, you, you know, you've got social media, you, you, you're playing stadiums full of 70, 80,000 people week in, week out. How do you block out the negativity, the hate? Yeah, I mean, um, I think it's a big thing to be able to deal with in, in football nowadays, you know. Uh, you have a lot of young boys and girls growing up and social media is such a big platform it's hard to kind of stay off that so um, for me it's always just been about believing in myself you know 
Uh, I'm here for a reason. I'm playing on the pitch for a reason. So, of course, people from the outside, fans, pundits, the media are going to have their opinion. But I'm here. I'm doing it. I'm the one that trusts my ability 100%. And I've worked hard to get to this point. It's not just been... I've not just been thrown onto that pitch just for any reason. I've worked hard my whole life and dedicated my whole life to, to be there. So, um, yeah, when, when I'm out there, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm fully focused, especially as a striker, like I touched on earlier. I think uh, when maybe you're not scoring or the chances ain't coming your way, just be ready for the next one. And um, that's what happened out there. It took, what, 86 minutes to, to get the <laughs> goal, to get, um, and I was able to put it away. So, um, and I mean, for me, it's just about being so much more than just a goal scorer. You know, yeah. I have a responsibility for the team. I'm the captain of the team, so I try and lead by example, not just with the ball, without the ball, whether it's talking, helping guys out. So, you know, I have so much uh, that I'm trying to do. You yeah. know, the noise is kind of just, it's just noise. I'm, I'm focused on a, a lot of other stuff. 100%. AJ, you were, in, you were in the stands yesterday. Can you, you, were in, you know, you, you see it from, from, I guess, the side of the pitch, but AJ, you're in the concourses, you're on Wembley Way. You know what I mean, you're in the mixer. Can you talk to us about the atmosphere? Yeah, of course, man. The atmosphere was crazy. I mean, like, like you guys said, it's been a tough time going through a pandemic. I think this is what we needed, man. It's what the nation needed. I love the way football brings people together. And for me, you know, it's always been a, a, a lovely experience getting to take my younger brother. But this time, my missus treated me. She took me to the game. <laughs> I was ecstatic. I always knew we had it. Obviously, I'm, I'm not trying to gas you up too much. I don't want to give you too much confidence, but I knew you had it in the bag, man. And, you know, I heard I, I heard all the talk. And obviously, being a Tottenham fan, I know how much you got to your game, whether it comes down to the passing, the leadership, you know what I'm saying, your positioning. And I already knew. I knew the goals would come, man. It's only a matter of time. So, yeah, it was a wicked experience for me, man. 100%. Yeah, no, definitely. Do you know what's interesting? I think music and, and football are so synonymous with each other. I don't know whether it's because... They both bring people together. But I was going to say, why do you both think that there's, there's such that, that connection between music artists, footballers, music and football in general? Yeah, I mean, um, like AJ said there, just bringing people happiness, you know, yeah. bringing them joy. Obviously, when AJ's performing in front of crowds, seeing them cheer, seeing them stand up, seeing them sing. And um, yeah, we're just, we're, we're all artists in our own way, I guess. You know, we're all performing, we're all giving the fans or the people what they what they want to yeah. see and uh, when you have good nights like that and special occasions then it's just that's the high that's what you do it for so um, yeah just just a, a special day and just uh, so proud to be a part of it for sure AJ from your side yeah man I mean it's, it's wicked because obviously as, as a young boy growing up in the UK obviously we all love footy so we all want to be footballers unfortunately I wasn't good enough but <laughs> um, music was my calling man but we we stand on the stage on our own and those guys get to be part of a team and I'll never know how it feels to be you know have that the, the camaraderie of being with a team and winning together but on the flip side when I talk to some of my friends who play football they say like they don't know how it feels to be on their own you know what I'm saying it's, it's a different type yeah. of um, when you're standing there on the stage, you know, the, the, the pitch is your stage, the stage is my stage, and I feel like we all just, our, our aim is to bring joy to everyone, man, and we're definitely doing it, so <laughs> we're here doing the right job. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know what? We've we seen Jack come on the show, and the manner have done a, a song for Jack. AJ, when are we going to see, I know, I know obviously you've yeah. done a few songs regards to footballers, but when are we going to see maybe a Harry Kane song? <laughs> Mate, Harry, get, I don't know if he knows, he gets shout-outs in my music all the time, man. Trust me. Over <laughs> here, we're, we're, we're obviously Team England, Team Spurs, Team K, man. We got you, trust I, me. But the song's coming, man. I appreciate <laughs> it. I appreciate did, you, it. did you give us a little sneak preview of potentially a couple bars? Listen, you're cheeky. Soon come. It'll come. I'm going to... You know, I had to try. I had to try. But you know what? He's, he's going to voice note me later. Right, he's going to voice note me the whole get. verse. He's going to voice note me the whole verse. And he's gonna be, I'll send it over okay, to you. Yeah, don't yeah, worry. Send it over, send it over. But AJ, tell us what you've got going on. <laughs> I know you've got uh, the Flu Game, that album out now. Where can people go and get that? Yeah. Yeah, man. Flu Game out now. Obviously, all streaming platforms. Go give that a look. Um, obviously, roughly based on some basketball, I thought I talk so much about football, I'll give people an insight into my love for basketball as well. I just love sports, really. Um, but yeah, man, that's out now. I'm just enjoying the football, I'll be honest, bro. Enough <laughs> of the music talk. I'm just here to enjoy the Euros, man. Hopefully, we could bring it home. We could bring it home, hopefully. Hopefully. Uh, so any, any, last, any last words of encouragement for the boys? Yeah, yeah, last words, man. Obviously, Kane, you're at the top of your game. We're all behind you. We all love you. Keep doing what you do best, man. And we got your back. Trust me. Go bring it home. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Much love, AJ. We'll see you soon. Cheers, bro. Cheers mate. Much love, guys. Thank bye you bye. so much. Bless. Right, let's jump up and speak to some more fans. Yep. You know what I mean? It's not just AJ Tracy who's the big fan here. We've got six massive England fans. If you stand, 
yourself right on that between yep. the ball there. Perfect. First up, guys, we've got Miriam in London. What's your question for Harry? Hi. Hi, Harry Kane. Um, Hi. It's so, great, it's so great to be here right now. Um, you're my favourite player. Um, like I started supporting Tottenham from around 2017. It's not long, but um, it, feel, it feels like long because that went 2021. Um, well done for getting the golden boot recently. And yesterday's goal was really amazing. Um, like everyone, I was like screaming at the TV as well. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I'm yeah, a big nice. Tottenham fan as well. Um, yeah. Oh, wow. I appreciate um, it. My... Thank you for your support. Yeah. Um, before I ask my question, I was wondering whether I can do like a virtual fist bump. Get yeah, yeah. Well, to, 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 to the camera there. There you go. There you go. You got that? <laughs> Thank 100%. you so much. Wicked. Okay, <laughs> okay, what's your um, question? My question is, um, was well, kind of similar to what you're just talking about. Um, despite all the successes of being such a great player, how do you deal with the stresses that come from on and off the pitch? Yeah, I mean, it's a great question. Uh, for me, it's just about staying in the moment, uh, not getting too high or too low. There's going to be ups and downs along the road. So, um, yeah, just believing in yourself, work hard, um, make sure you're doing all your training, all, all, all the stuff away from, from the pitch. And then, you know, you'll always be prepared for when an occasion comes. So when a chance comes your way or a moment comes your way, you'll be ready to do it. So, um, yeah, the most important thing for me is just self-belief. Just always believe in yourself and, and you'll have a chance. Miriam, great question. Thank you very much. Next up, we've got Phil, who's all the way in Basel in Switzerland. Phil, what's your question? Hi, Harry. Hi, Josh. Um, congratulations on the big uh, win last night. We were absolutely buzzing over here. I've got a small fan group over here, and uh, I'm built, uh, expanding it more and more, and more and more England fans are coming to watch the games as well. Uh, so, because we live, uh, I live literally near to Germany, so, so I got the Oof. comments from uh, the Germans <laughs> as well. Zone, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so, but it was an amazing night last night, and we were very happy. Um, my question would be: um, If a movie would be made about your football career, which actor would you want to play yourself? Wow. Oh, good That's question. A reincarnation of goal, or something. <laughs> yeah, a little goal. I'm sure there's been a goal yeah. too as well. So maybe <laughs> yeah. Goal three. Um, oh, a good question. I would say, do you know what people have said? Well, it's quite kind of them to say. I look like Ryan Gosling a little okay, bit. You know? so I, I, love, I love Ryan Gosling. I like him as an actor. So, you know, he, he can get the he can get the sweet back hair going and everything like that. I don't know what his football skills are like. You know, but... we, you know do a couple of one-on-one <laughs> sessions and have Ryan Gosling play in a film. It's not too bad. That's it, yeah. All right, Wicked Phil, and I, I look forward to uh, more and more fans coming to join you in the, uh, in the England fan club in Basel. Um, we've got Tommy and Ellie in Suffolk. What are your questions, guys? Hi, Harry. Um, well done on the goal and the game last night. Um, all of us being Tottenham fans, we were all screaming when your goal went in. We were, like, up at um, my friend's house, so you have, like, a really good set-up over there. Uh, so, yeah, like, when your goal went in, we all just went crazy. It was so good. Um, my question is, yeah, it was good. Um, what is your favourite goal that you've ever scored for England and how does it compare to the goal that you scored last night against Germany? Yeah, I mean, good question. Um, yesterday it was definitely up there uh, as one of my favourite moments in an England shirt, one of my favourite goals. Um, I think my debut goal, you know, I, I dreamed about playing for England in my whole life and then to score... Was that against Lithuania? Lithuania, yeah. yeah, at Wembley as well. So to score my debut, it's, you know, it holds a close place in my heart. And then I say the Tunisia in the World Cup, you know, it was one all last minute and then scoring a header. Uh, the same sort of scenes, obviously, we was away from home, but... Um, the big bundle where everyone jumps on top of each other. Yeah, You're making a thing of it. So. Yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, them three, uh, or them two, and then, of course, the one yesterday is definitely goes pretty much top of the list, to be honest. Yeah, amazing, amazing occasion. Great question, guys. Uh, we've got Ali, who's in London. Ali, what's your question? Hi, Harry. Um, amazing to chat to you today. Um, I'm uh, also a massive Spurs fan, but I'm a football coach as well. And I've actually been volunteering at Wembley during this tournament. So I was at Wembley on my break, managing to find a screen to watch you on. Um, and all the other volunteers were like, oh, Harry Kane, man, Harry Kane, when's he going to score? I was like, look, trust the process. And then you did it. So I was so 
pleased when you did that. Um, to be honest, my question's kind of already been covered in... AJ stole my thunder, to be honest. But um, <laughs> it's kind of linked to... to <laughs> it's kind, I forgive him. Um, it's kind of linked to what you were saying about um, how you kind of stay focused and positive, even when maybe the goals aren't coming because you know you've got so much else to your game. Um, but as a coach, I was just wondering if you had any specific advice or tips, maybe for younger players who might lack that self-confidence at times? Yeah, I mean, I always say to, like, like I said, to young boys and girls, um, the two most important things for me is self-belief, because if you don't believe in yourself, then, you know, you can't expect a coach or another player or someone else to believe in you. It needs to come from, from you as an individual. Uh, and then hard work, you know. Um, me growing up, I had, to, I had to work harder than anyone else to, to get to where I am now. And, um, yeah, if you're out there training, working hard, I, I really believe that, you know, good things come your way in games. If you're out there training extra, an extra hour after training, all different types of finishing, um, then when you come into a game, it's just natural. It, it kind of just falls your way. Sometimes the ball just follows you. So, um, yeah, just to stay, stay positive, you know. Um, there's going to be ups and downs along any career, any, any match, any game of football. Uh, but just being ready for the next opportunity, and that's what I try and do. And uh, thankfully, like I said, one come yesterday and I was able to take it. Ali, I think that hopefully no one from Wembley is watching the fact that you took a 90 minute break to watch the game. <laughs> <laughs> You're supposed to be working. That's the only time we get to eat. That's the only time we get to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Fair play. Oh, we'll move strictly on before we get you in any more trouble. We've got Ellie and Luton. How are you doing? Hi, Harry. I want to start by congratulating you on your excellent performance and the amazing goal you scored yesterday. That was such a great game to watch on the TV from home. Uh, the question I have for you is, do you have an inspiration that you look up to in playing football? And if so, how do they inspire you as well? Yeah, great question. Thank you, first and foremost. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean I've, I've said before, I think, uh, as a player, and to look at other players like Ronaldo and Messi to see what they've done in the game uh, inspires me to be better. Um, they kind of took football to, in my opinion, another level, especially in, in this modern era. So, um, yeah, I like to watch the best player. I like to watch how the best prepare um, and seeing them do it year in, year out definitely uh, motivates me to, to be doing it for many more years to come. So, um, yeah, from a football point of view, they, they set the example, they set... Uh, the standard. Um, so that's that's my ultimate goal. My ultimate goal is to be as best, to be the best I can be, and that's down to me working working hard away from the pitch, on the pitch, doing as much as possible to make sure that come the end of my career, I'm, I'm satisfied satisfied with what I've done. Great question, Ellie. Um, we're going to go finally to Matt, who's over in Kent. What's your question for Harry? Hi. Uh, um, well done on the win yesterday, and good luck for the rest of the tournament. Um, I really enjoyed your interview with Gary Neville the other week as well and got a real sense of how much it means to you to play for England. Um, obviously, there's plenty of serious questions I could ask about your career, but I thought I'd <laughs> give you a nice fun one. Where's this it's a bit tricky as well. Um, okay. So, can you name or choose your all-time England five-a-side team? Oh, what a question. Right on the spot, that is a tricky one. Um, all-time five-a-side team. Do I get to pick myself or not? Uh, you can do if you want, or you could you could be the manager, I guess. But you can pick. Oh, yourself. I'll be the I'll, I'll, I'll be the I'll, I'll be the manager. I think um, we go we go Sir Bobby, England captain, of course, World Cup winner. What a player! What a, what a magical magical player! So he gets in there first and foremost. Has to be done. Um, I'm gonna go. I'll go John Barnes. I mean, nice. in a five-a-side team, I Frightening. think it'd be yeah. unstoppable. What a, what a player. Magician on the ball. Um, yeah, joy to watch. Um, I've got David Beckham. David Beckham was a huge kind of hero of mine growing not, up. Not a lot of space for deliveries in there, though. Yeah, but you can, you can set plays, just score some free kicks. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Underhead height, right? But right. I think just his, his attitude, his, yeah. Yeah, his, his leadership. You know, I loved watching Beckham on the, with an England shirt. Um, so what have I got? Two more left? You've got two more left. It doesn't uh, have to be any balance on this side. It just has to be. It's just all right. Well, I'll go. I'll go. Wayne Rooney. Um, obviously, England's all-time top goal scorer. Uh, had the pleasure of playing with him. Amazing player. Amazing person. Um, real joy to watch in in training and and in the games. 
Um, oh, I've got one more well, spot. We'll, keep. We'll, get, we'll, we'll, make, we'll have a keep. We can't have him rush goal. We can't have you going in goal. And stuff. We've got a keeper as well. Yeah. Um, so let's go. We'll go Jordan Pickford. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Mate, Doesn't put four clean sheets in a row. Yeah. Let's keep him coming. He's a great guy. We'll get on well. So I'll throw him in the five side team. Bit of a, yeah, he's got a bit of a shot on him as well. So he might throw some shots from, but to say he's from got his own half. Is, yeah. So, yeah, so. Okay, fair yeah. play. He can Matt, handle great team. question. Ah, exactly, true. yeah, there you go. <laughs> Matt, great question. Harry, great answer as well. It was very insightful. This part of the show is where you basically have to pick your favourite question. Okay, so let me remind you. Okay, okay. we've got Miriam in London who uh, said, despite all the successes of being such a great player, how do you deal with the stress that comes on and off the pitch? We had Phil in Basel that said, if there was a movie made about your football career, who would you want to play? Who would you want to play yourself? We've got Tom and Ellie who said, what's your favourite England goal? Uh, Ali said, any advice on tips for young players with low self-confidence? Ellie said, do you have an inspiration you look up to? Um, and then obviously there's a five-a-side question as well. Um... Oh, I mean, they're all good questions. They're all fantastic, but you've got to make the choice. You've got to make the choice. You've put me on the spot stuff. now. Um, I'm going to go with the coaching question. I think it's oh, OK, Ali uh, yeah. in London, all right. Ali in London. I think it's important for young, boy, young boys and girls to know what it takes to, to try and reach the top. And, uh, yeah, it's a good question. All right, fantastic. Well, Ali, Harry Kane is going to take on the Lions 10 Challenge for you, OK, where you have the chance to win a signed ball, a signed shirt, and maybe enter into the E-Match Day prize draw. Harry... If you head over to the uh, the putting green, the chipping here. green, you have a few practice shots. I'm just going to explain to the people okay. at home exactly how Lions 10 works. If you don't know by now, yeah, just have a few practice, not too many. Guys, we're like episode 23 right now, 22. You should know. But if you don't, Harry's going to have 10 chances, 10 opportunities to land the ball onto the green. OK, for each ball he lands on the green, he will get one point. If the ball goes in the hole, it's worth three points and he'll enter Ali into the E match day prize draw. Oof, it's nearly gone in as well. Guys, he's looking good. He's looking good. Come over it. Come over it. I took my best two there. Do you know what? I, I feel like you, you, before the show, you, you, had, you had a nice little rhythm and you've carried that on. Well, let's keep it going then. Here we go. Oh, you know, just, 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 ten, just, you know, listen, there's not 13, 14 balls. This, it's 10. 10, ten balls. opportunities. 10 chances. And what do I need to get? You need to get. Oh, Jordan Henderson's on seven. To equal. Jordan Henderson. Right. Mason Mount's on five. All right, let's okay. go. Stonesy's on three, Crouchy's on two. If it right. goes in, it's free. Oh, he started very, very well. Right. Okay, that's one point. That's off the mark with the first shot. I feel like I need to get one in, though. I don't so. think anyone's surprised, H. Oh, that's going to run on. That's two points. Oh. That's Ali's won the sign ball already. Is that the sign ball? That's the sign ball. Go. Two more for the sign shirt. That might not run. Mm. You know, hang on. Bit hang quick, on, bit quick on, that one, wasn't it? Let me just make sure that's all. That's better. Oh, there you go. Just flatten that down a little bit. Yeah, groundsman's been getting a lot of grief recently. Got a bit quick on that one. That's going to roll on. Oh! Mm. Listen, we're still on two. Lost my rhythm a little bit, didn't I? You know, I'll, I'll just, I'll be quiet with golf etiquette. It's not the best. There we go. There it is. There, that could be going in the... Oh, there we go. There we go. We're we go. playing pinball now. That's it. I, I enjoy it. Right, that's a grand total of... Oh, that's five. That's five. I so the sign ball, yeah. the sign shirt, and Ali's been entering into the E match day prize draw. Now you're playing for the leaderboard. Oh, this is, this is brilliant golf, by the way. That's gone in. That's Woo! gone in as well. Two on the bounce. Two in a row. <laughs> Well, my maths is terrible. What is it? I got eight. That's eight. So you're already at the top of the leaderboard. That one was nice. That was a good... Just crept it round the ball. Wow. OK, a little bit... You know what? That's, that's what mm. happens. After a big win... A bit aggressive Sometimes there. you get too, too yeah, excited. Yeah, got too excited it happens. there. How many have I got left? You've got one, two, three, four, five. Five left and you're on eight. Oof. Not bad. Hang on. Wait, hang on, Harry, Harry. I know you're. I know you're a winner. I know you're a winner, and I know you do anything to win. But there's ten. There's. I'm. I'm trying to count the balls here. Yeah. Have you sneaked a few extra? Oh, that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm saying. How many? What have I got? One, two, three, four, five. Two six. in the hole. So I got two left. I got two left. What? Am I going to trust you after that? I have got two left. Yeah. There's All right. One, two, two three, four, five, six. Two left, and you're in a grand total of six, seven. Eight. You're in a grand total of nine points. All right. Come to on. The top of our leaderboard with two to play. 
I want to see double figures, H. Oh my! There you go. What? Let's keep it's, it going. It's not only double figures. This is the last one. It's 12 already. 12 already. We one can get to, to 15 potentially if this goes in, Come which on. no one will beat. I'm telling you. Come on. Feeling good. <sighs> that could roll. That could. It snuck on. I'll take it. I'll take it. H, that's that's 13. Unlucky for some, but obviously not for you. I'll take that, that all is, day long. That is fantastic. I don't know. I I expect you to be good, but that that was that was a different level. Uh, that was better than I thought, to be fair. H H, in the squad. Come, 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 stand on there, stand yeah. on there, stand on there. We've got to tell the people at home, because you might never see golf like that again. I don't know if you watch <laughs> the PGA Tour, I don't, you're watching Augusta, I don't care. You're never going to see golf. This man can do absolutely everything. That's Justin Rose, good friend, he's been teaching me, so there you go. Do you know what? I know I, he's a big England fan as well, so I'll give him a little shout out. Do you know what? Let's have a little look at the leaderboard to see where you're at, yeah. because it's, it, it's almost unfair to put this up there, because I, I feel a bit bad for Jordan Henderson. You're at the top with 13. We've got Jordan Henderson, who used to be at the top, on a lowly seven. <laughs> right? And then, then it gets even worse. Mason Mount, who's, I think he's still celebrating his hole-in-one, is on five. And then we've got Stonesy on three. And we've got Crouchy, unfortunately, propping up the, uh, the bottom leaderboard on two. On well, two. Actually, that, let me not forget, we had Deck on three as well. But H, fantastic. Everyone who comes on the show, I know, I know you're obviously Captain Fantastic and you get your own uh, special cap for... Uh, come to the tournament, wow. but here on Lions Den you get your, uh, your very own limited edition Lions Den cap. I like that. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you just right. first. H, you've got away with a cap, Ali in London's got away with a sign ball, the sign shirt, and she's been entered into the E Match Day prize, which get a massive bundle of goods, a potential. Perfect. And uh, top man, congratulations. Listen, Thank you very much. I, I lost my you. tooth yesterday celebrating the, uh, the goal, but... I'm back now. Mate, hopefully hope a, few, a few more to come. Hopefully. I'm about to say, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll get rid of all my team if yeah. we bring it up. Guys, thank you very much. See you tomorrow. Thank you.